Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and the loopylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel. It's week one of the Crocheosaurus Rex crochet along and in this video we're going to be making our legs for our dinosaur. To follow along with today's tutorial you'll need the following materials. You'll need a worsted weight yarn in your color, two different colors of your preference. I'm using Keenan hand dyed yarn in this lovely green color and the natural color. You'll see in the video that I'm actually going to substitute in this golden color for the white so that way it's easier for you to see. You'll need a D or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, and some polyfill stuffing. So let's hop on into crocheting the legs for our Crocheosaurus Rex. Right, so we're going to start off by making our dinosaur's legs in this video. And so in the actual written version of the pattern in, in my sample image of my dinosaur here, you can see that we've started with the white color here to make their legs. But because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing working with the white, I'm going to actually be using the yellow color here to make my legs. So if you're wanting to make your dinosaur exactly the way my sample looks, then you would substitute in your white yarn or whatever color you're using for those accent colors. So to start our legs, we're going to start by creating a magic circle. To do that, you're going to take the tail end of your yarn and lay it across your palm, pin it down with your thumb, and then grab the working end of the yarn and wrap it around your fingers and then bring it around to the front to cross over itself to create an X like this. Then while you maintain tension on the working yarn, you're going to turn your hand and then bring the yarn with you and pin it down between your ring finger and your pinky finger here. Then you're going to grab your crochet hook and insert it under the first strand and over the second. Then use your hook to pull the second strand out under the first, and then you're going to twist the yarn to create a little loop. It's hard to get you to see that here. There we go. You can see that little twist there, that cross. That's what we're looking for. So then once you've got your cross in your yarn, you're going to yarn over with the working yarn here and pull that yarn through the loop on your hook. Then you can remove your fingers and then your yarn tail is going to be tucked inside the magic ring. You're going to pull that out and you are ready to start crocheting. So for round one, we're going to work six single crochets into the magic circle. So to do that, we're going to insert our hook into the middle of the ring. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And that's your first single crochet completed. So now we need to do that five more times. So back into the magic circle, yarn over and pull up a loop. Two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. And that's your second single crochet completed. We'll do this together one more time. Back into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, then yarn over again and pull through both loops. So we're going to continue to do this until we have a total of six single crochets. We already have three, so we just have three more to go. All right, so now we have our six single crochets worked into our ring. We can, we know we have six single crochets if you turn your stitches so that way you, the V's at the top of the stitches face you and counting from my hook over towards myself, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. And this little one that's hiding out at the bottom is six. All right, so now that I've got six stitches, I'm going to pull the tail on my magic circle to close it. All right, and this is what your piece should look like right now. You're going to need your stitch marker in just a moment. So we're ready to move in to round two. For round two, we're going to work a single crochet increase into each stitch around. A single crochet increase is when we work two single crochets into the same stitch. So we'll should do that together now. Working into that first stitch there, and don't worry if it's a little tight, that's very common. And then we're going to D 
do two single crochets worked into that first stitch. So there's our first single crochet. And now that it's done, we're going to grab that stitch marker and place it into the top of that first stitch. Then we're going to go back into that same stitch and single crochet a second time. And that's your first single crochet increase completed. Now we're going to do that into the next stitch. So into the next stitch, single crochet, back into that same stitch, and single crochet a second time. We're going to do this in each stitch around. At the end of this round, we should have 12 single crochets. So if you'd like to pause your video and work a single crochet increase in each stitch around, I meet you back here to show you how to move on to round three in just a moment. All right, so I just finished round two and we're moving into round three. We're gonna move that stitch marker out of the way and we're ready to start our first stitch. Our first stitch for round three is to work one single crochet into that first stitch. And again, we wanna move that stitch marker up and place it into the first stitch. And we're gonna keep moving the stitch marker up to mark the first stitch of every round. So now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So again, that's those two single crochets worked into the same stitch. And now for this round, we have a pattern that we need to do around this piece. And the first part of that pattern we've already done together. That's one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next. We need to do this a total of six times and we've done it once, so we're going to need to do it five more times. So let's do our next pattern set together. One single crochet into this first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. All right, and again, one single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue to work the remaining repeats of one single crochet followed by single crochet increase around this piece, at the end of this round, you should have 18 single crochets. Let me meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so we're moving into round four. So we're going to move our stitch marker out of the way and we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch. Then we'll grab our stitch marker and place it into that stitch. And then we're going to work a single crochet increase into this next stitch here. And now we have a repeat that we need to do five times. And that repeat is one single crochet into each of the first two stitches followed by a single crochet increase. And we'll do that together now. So one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next, and then a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, so that's our first repeat. We need to do this four more times. So one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next, and a single crochet increase into the next. All right, so if you'd like to pause your video and do that repeat three more times, there will be one stitch left to be worked in this round when you're done those repeats. And I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to finish off this round and work into that last stitch. All right, I'm back and I just finished my last repeat of those two single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And then we have this one stitch left to be worked. And what we're going to do is we're going to work one single crochet into that last stitch. At the end of round four, you should have 24 single crochet stitches around. Now, if you're wanting to match gauge in this pattern to ensure that your toy turns out to be the appropriate size and that you wanna make sure you have the right amount of yarn, then what we'll do is at this point, we would pause our crocheting to measure our gauge. Now, when you're measuring, measuring gauge in amigurumi, you usually measure it across the widest point of a circular piece. So 
I build mine in or my gauge swatches into my toys. So what we've done here, we've got our piece and across the widest point is from where we just finished crocheting across the piece. And now you always measure front loop to front loop. And so I've got my ruler here and I'm just going to lay that across. And now at this point, if you're matching gauge, then the, your piece should be 1.25 inches across the widest point. And so from front loop to front loop, mine is 1.25 inches and I'm good to keep crocheting. Now, gauge is not vital to the project, but again, if you're like short on yarn or you wanna make sure it's you know the given size in the pattern, then you do need to match the gauge. All right, so now we're moving into round five and round five is such a fun round because we're going to create the toes for our little dinosaur. So we're going to move our stitch marker out of the way and we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first eight stitches. All right, so here's our first, move up our stitch marker and then we are going to do seven more stitches. So one, four and there is seven so I have a total of eight single crochets completed so now we're going to do our first toe and we use a modified bobble stitch to create the toes so we're going to yarn over hook and insert it into this next stitch here yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through those first two loops. All right, so we've got two loops on our hook now. So we're going to yarn over and go back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. So now we've got three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and go back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through the first two loops. You should have four loops on your hook now. Then we're going to yarn over and insert back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through those first two loops. So what we've got now, we've got five incomplete stitches on our hook. So that means we've got five loops. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those stitches at once and that's going to create our bobble. So what we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So we're going to go one and two. Now you can do this now or you can wait to the end of the round and you want to make sure that you use your finger to pop that bobble to the right side of the fabric. All right. So now we're going to do our next bobble. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over back into that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to yarn over and go back into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, Yarn over and go back into the stitch one last time. Pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Now you can tell you're ready to finish because you have these five loops on your hook. So then you're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops at once. Then you're going to single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. All right, so we've got two toes completed. And again, you can see I'm just using my finger to push the toe to the right side of the fabric. So now we're doing our third and last toe here. So we're going to yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over back into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Back into the same stitch, yarn over, Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and back into that same stitch one last time. Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So now that I've got five loops on my hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops to complete my last toe. 
So now that I've done my last bobble, I'm going to have to single crochet into each of the remaining last nine stitches here. But what we're going to do is we're going, we need to change colors going into the next round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet into each of the first eight stitches, and then I'll show you what we're going to need to do to change our colors. So let's just start single crocheting towards the end. So we have one stitch left and we're going to start our last single crochet in the yellow. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I'm going to put my piece down. I'm going to grab my other color, which is for me the green. And so we're switching to the main color of our dinosaur now. And what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over hook with your new color, but when I'm on the video, I like to do a slip knot here because it makes it a little easier for me while I'm on the video. So you're going to yarn over hook with the new color. Again, you don't have to use the slip knot like I am. I'm just doing it to make it easier for the video here. And so now that we've got the yarn over, we're going to pull that yarn through the stitch and we're ready to move on to the next round. And don't forget to pop out that last bobble to the right side of the fabric. Now, after we have a few stitches here, you can cut your yellow yarn or whatever, if you're using the white cut yarn, uh, but I like to crochet over it for the first couple of stitches here just to help keep it secure. And if you want whatever, whatever, your preferences for weaving in your ends. You can weave them in, you can crochet over them, whatever you feel most comfortable with is how you'll deal with your yarn end from your first part of your leg here. So for rounds six through eight, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around, All right? So I'm going to crochet over my tails. I'm going to put my first stitch in here. And then I'm going to move up my marker. And we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. And so if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds six, seven, and eight, working one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here to show you our instructions for moving into round nine. All right, so I'm back and I just finished my last round, which is round eight. And I wanted to just pause here and show you what we, our pieces should look like before we're continuing on. So before we continue on, I like to deal with the tail end from my magic ring before I keep going on and it gets, too, it gets too hard to do that. So you can use your yarn needle to weave in your ends, or if you'd like, you can just do a knot. So what I like to do is I do a couple of knots. And I try to get them as close to the fabric as possible. So that way it's not got any sort of room for movement to unravel. So a couple of knots should be fine. You can cut your yarn tail if you'd like, or keep it in there to use it as stuffing, just so it's not getting in our way here. I'm going to cut mine to keep it out of our way. So now we're ready to move on to round nine. So in round nine, we're gonna start decreasing our legs and we're gonna do that every other round moving forward. So for uh, round nine here, we're going to start with placing one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So there's one. And here is two. And then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. When we do decreases in amigurumi, we like to use something called an invisible decrease. And you can do a normal decrease if you'd like, but this helps it your decrease look a little less visible on the front of your fabric. So to do that, we're going to insert our hook into the front loop of the first stitch and the second stitch before we do our single crochet. So I'm going to take that out and show you one more time. When you look at your stitch, you've got two loops. You've got one closest to you and one furthest from you. The one closest to you is always called the front loop. And you're going to up and insert your hook up and under that front loop. Now you might have to do a little weird twisty thing like I do 
and use your hook to pick up the front loop of the next stitch as well. Then you're going to yarn over and pull a loop through both those front loops that you picked up and then you just single crochet as you normally do and that helps make your stitch a little less visible. All right, so that's your first single crochet decrease. So now we have a pattern repeat that we need to do a total of four times. And that repeat is four single crochets, which means one single crochet in each of the first four stitches followed by a decrease. So I'll show you how to do that now. So here's one single crochet, two, three, and four. And now we're going to do our decrease stitch and we're going to do that the same way we did before going up and into the front loop of the first and second stitch and then we single crochet as normal. And that's our first repeat completed. We need to do that two more times. So one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. followed by our invisible decrease. So up and under the front loops of the first and second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And now we'll do that repeat one more time, one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. And there's four, followed by our single crochet decrease, So you should have two stitches left to be worked in this round. We're just going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches. At the end of round nine, you should have 20 single crochets. So moving into round 10, it's a simple one. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 10 to show you how we're moving into round 11. All right, so we are moving into round 11. For round 11, we have a repeat that we need to do four times. And that repeat is one single crochet into each of the first three stitches followed by a decrease. So we'll do this first one together now. Work one single crochet into that first stitch and then move your stitch marker up. Then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So now that we have our three single crochets completed, we're going to do a single crochet decrease. And again, we're going to go up and under those front loops only, and then single crochet. And now we need to do this repeat three more times. So one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. Followed by the single crochet decrease. So again, front loops only and single crochet. All right, so now we need to do this two more times. We'll do it one more time together. One single crochet into each of the first three stitches, followed by a single crochet decrease. So if you'd like to pause your video and do the last repeat on your own, I'll meet you back here in just a moment. And at the end of this round, you should have 16 single crochet stitches. All right, so now we're moving into round 12 and we're going to do one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around for round 12, you should still have 16 single crochets at the end of the round. Now, after or during this round, whatever your preference is, you should start stuffing your foot. I'm going to start mine at the end of this round and I will talk to you about stuffing in just a moment. So I'll meet you back here when you're ready to start round 13. All right, so I just finished round 12 and this is what our foot looks like right now. So we're going to start stuffing if you haven't already done so. So grab your stuffing. I like to pull it apart to make sure it goes in evenly. And then we're just gonna start adding the stuffing to our foot. Now, when you're stuffing the toy, we're going to continue to add stuffing through as we crochet. So you'll need to stop whenever you feel comfortable to stop and stuff your leg. 
And when we're adding stuffing, we want to add small pieces at a time into our piece. And when we're poking it into the toy, we're going to use our finger to move around the inside of the piece to make sure that the stuffing is distributed evenly throughout the piece. And we want to feel around in there for any sort of holes or gaps in the stuffing because any gaps in the stuffing or holes that you might find, if they're not filled with stuffing, as the stuffing kind of distributes over time and settles, it's going to uh, want to fill in those gaps and any large gaps or if you have multiple gaps in there, then as it settles, your toy is going to become less firm and it might become more floppy because eventually the toy or the stuffing does break down over time. So we want to make sure that you take the time to stuff your toy properly and you want to stuff it firmly. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in here. You might be surprised how much uh, stuffing you will actually need for this process. Now I can tell that mine is doing is probably at the point where it's good, but I'm going to stuff it a little less than I normally do just because I don't want it to be in hindering your view at all. So right now this is good for me. As we're continuing to move throughout our piece, you're going to want to continue to add stuffing as we're working. All right, so now we're moving into round 13. So we're going to move our stitch marker out of the way. And then for uh, round 13, we're going to start by working one single crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to move up our stitch marker. And then we're going to work a single crochet decrease again and up and under those front loops of the first and second stitch and then single crochet. And now we have a repeat that we're going to do three times. And that repeat is one single crochet into each of the first two stitches followed by a decrease. So let's do those together. One single crochet into each of the first two stitches followed by a single crochet decrease. All right, so that's our first repeat. We'll do it two more times. One single crochet into each of the first two stitches, followed by a decrease. All right, and our last repeat, one single crochet into each of the first two stitches, followed by a decrease. And then we have one stitch left to be worked in this round and we're just going to work one single crochet into that last stitch. At the end of round 13 you should have 12 stitches around. So moving into round 14 we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch I'll meet you back here at the end of round 14 to show you how we move into round 15. So before we move into round 15, this is going to be the last round of our leg. So we want to make sure that we take some time to finish stuffing the leg. And I'm going to quickly do that here. So again, when you're stuffing, you want to make sure that it's really firmly packed in there and you're filling in any gaps. Now the one thing, and it does take practice when you're stuffing, is you don't want to overstuff your toy to the point where it's stretching the fabric. So a good rule of thumb is when you're squishing your piece, if it feels like a firm orange, a firm ripe orange, then that is probably the best place for you to be as long as it is not pulling your toy's fabric at all. All right, so I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit here and then we're going to do our last round. Okay, so moving into round 15, this is our last decrease row. We're going to move our stitch marker out of the way and we're going to do a repeat four times. And our first repeat here is one single crochet into that first stitch. Move up our stitch marker. And then we're going to do a decrease. Again, under those front loops and then single crochet. And that's our first repeat completed. We need to do it three more times. So one single crochet into the first stitch, 
followed by a decrease. Okay, and again, one single crochet followed by a decrease. And our last time here, one single crochet followed by a decrease. So now that we are done, we're going to grab our scissors and we're going to cut our yarn tail. You want to have a long yarn tail for sewing and you don't want to run out. So longer is better than not. If you're unsure of how long to go, I guess I'd recommend between eight and 10 inches for your yarn tail. So I'm going to cut mine here. And then you're going to pull your yarn tail all the way through that last stitch here. All right? This is a good chance for you to add any additional stuffing to finish stuffing your toy. You may need to use your scissors or a little skewer or something to get into that last round. I'm just adding a tiny bit more here. All right. So now that I have that firmly stuffed, I'm going to grab my yarn needle. So I've got my yarn needle or tapestry needle, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to thread it onto our yarn tail. So now that it's on our yarn tail, we're going to use a technique that is called the ultimate finish. And what this does is it closes up the piece and gives it a nice clean finish, hence the name ultimate finish in our piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn needle and we're going to find the front loop only of the first stitch. We're going to bring our yarn needle up and under the front loop only and pull our yarn tail through. And we're going to weave our yarn tail under the front loop of every stitch around our final round just pulling our yarn tail all the way through. Oops. Again, just working all the way around the piece. All right, so now that we've pulled through all of the stitches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on that yarn tail and you can see that it cinches the top of that leg closed. All right, so it's pretty firmly closed there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go in through the center of my leg and I'm just going to come out the side of the piece. And so what that does is it's going to round that top of it out and I'm just going to leave my yarn tail there at the side of my piece and set this aside for assembly. So now you need to make a second leg. So I recommend rewinding the video and watching it again to make your second leg. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be making the arms for our dinosaur.